Hello everyone and welcome to a game from the finals of the FIDE Women's World Chess Championship. It's a game from uh, between Katarina Lagno and uh, Wen Junju. Uh, now Lagno defeated uh, Maria Muzichuk in the semifinals to get into the finals and uh, Wen Junju uh, has defeated Alexandra Kostenyuk who uh, after she dropped out, out of the competition uh, continued uh, commenting with Alexander Morozevich uh, on the rest of the games. Uh, so, uh, it, in a lot of ways, this game is similar to what's uh, going on over the board in the Carlsen vs. Caruana match, but uh, in a lot of ways it's also very different as the game is uh, much crazier and <laughs> the lines in this game uh, are really insane. So, before we check out the actual game, uh, uh, if you're interested in who defeated who, like the entire you know tree branching out, I will put a very nice link in the description below to the Chess24 website where you can uh, follow everything, and also uh, a nice link to the official FIDE website where you can check out uh, on some of the photos. Here are only a couple of photos uh, from the official FIDE website. Here is a very nice photo of Katarina. Uh, also, we have here a very nice photo uh, of the two of them. Uh, and here a very nice, well, not a close-up, but uh, I, it's the best I could find. But uh, there are a couple of more photos uh, on the link in the description below here, pondering uh, on the position. Uh, but that being said, let's check it out. Then it's very interesting as it uh, features a similar line. Uh, well, it's the same line uh, until it's not. Uh, that was featured in uh, Game 5 of the Carlsen vs. Caruana match. So E4. C5, we have the Sicilian defense on the board, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. Again, the uh, Nejmedino Rosolimo attack. Uh, we have g6, uh, castles, bishop to g7, rook to e1, uh, and now e5. And this is the exact same position that was on the board uh, in the game 5 in uh, Caruana versus Carlsen match, where uh, Caruana surprised Carlsen with this immediate b4. Uh, but here, Lagno actually prepares it with a3. Uh, a3, it's a uh, uh, it it uh, serves as a multi-purpose move. It prepares b4, so you definitely want to play it at some point. But also after this bishop retreats, it creates uh, an outpost on a2 for this light square bishop. Uh, so okay, uh, we have knight g2 e7. Uh, uh, Venjum prepares the castle, and now comes knight to c3. Uh, if you go b4 immediately, it doesn't really do all that much. Black can just ignore you and play. Uh, knight to d4, attack your bishop here, and after bishop goes back, uh, now it's actually black who is playing for some uh, very nice uh, development, uh, and uh, uh, it's going to be a very active game from black. Uh, so after knight g7, knight to c3, and now comes castle. Uh, bishop to c4, not allowing knight to d4 to come with tempo, and now comes d6. We have d3. Uh, and here you could develop with something like bishop to g4, uh, but uh, if you allow bishop to g5, then b b white's bishop to g5 will be somewhat better than your bishop to g4. Here, black can't really play f6 to get rid of your bishop, as uh, this light square bishop is pinning the f7 pawn, and you're gonna have to play h6 to unpin at some point. Uh, so, uh, Ju does it immediately. After d3, we have h6, not allowing bishop to g5. Uh, knight to d5, and now comes king to h7, uh, not allowing any future pinning ideas, now the king is no longer on g8, and also it serves uh, as an additional protection uh, to the h6 pawn uh, in the future ideas, like bishop to e3, queen d2 may be possible, and then the uh, h6 pawn will be end prize. Uh, so, okay, uh, the knight is now on d5, it's, a, it's an excellent square for the knight, also uh, if you ever want to challenge black's very strong center, you will have to play c3 and d4 at some point, so it does make sense to get the knight uh, off of c3. Uh, c3 is played now, we have f5, uh, and here... Uh, there are ideas possible here, but uh, uh, Lagno goes for the most exciting one. E captures on f5. Uh, here, you can play knight captures on f5, you can play bishop captures on f5, but uh, here is the most uh, important thing about this game. Uh, so, uh, as this is a match, uh, uh, Katarina is one point in the lead, and this is the final game uh, of their match, uh, unless uh, uh, Venjun manages to, to win this game. Uh, but basically, uh, Katarina Lagno only needs a draw with the white pieces to become uh, the world champion. And uh, it's a very uh, tough game for black, so uh, usually you would want to capture this with the bishop or with the knight. But as black really has to win this game, uh, g captures on f5 is played. And this is the one of the more critical moments in the game as, as you can get. Uh, because here the real question is, can white go knight to g5? 
And uh, if white can do this, then definitely you're either going to draw or win. But if you if you can't do this, then you're in a lot of trouble. So what's uh, the idea behind knight to g5? The idea is if you go knight to g5, notice that the bishop on c4 is still kind of controlling the g8 square. So now you're in check. If you capture the knight, then queen h5 check, king moves to g8, and now knight captures uh, an e7 delivers a double check, but also notice that the black king is now in checkmate. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't move the king, if you block, let's say bishop here, then you can play bishop captures on g5. Uh, there's the threat of queen captures on h6, and after the knight defends this, uh, well, you're just going to lose the queen, but there's no other way to defend the checkmate. So here, white is simply winning. Uh, but uh, there's much more to this position. After knight to g5 check, black doesn't have to, of course, capture the knight. Black can go king to h8. If king to h8 is played, then you get queen to h5, threatening knight to f7 check, but now knight captures on d5. Bishop captures and queen to f6. Uh, now controlling uh, d f7 square. Uh, and although you can play ki uh, knight to f7 check, uh, the king will then be able to come to h7 as the knight will no longer be controlling it. But here f4 uh, will be a tremendous move and it's uh, very hard to decide uh, how to continue this with black. If you capture, uh, then knight to f7 definitely is an idea. King h7, bishop captures on f4. Now the d6 pawn will fall and uh, black will eventually fall apart here. And if you don't open up the e file, uh, other ideas like... Well, you can't really move any of the pieces. You can try and develop with bishop to d7, but then knight to f3. The knight is now coming to h4, then to g6, and it will be very hard to play this with black. Uh, but uh, the biggest question of this position is, after knight to g5 check, not capturing the knight or going to h8. Of course, you don't want to go here because then you just lose the queen. Uh, the real question behind this uh, move is what happens if king comes to g6. And here, of course, Lagno had to spend uh, most of her time uh, calculating every possible line after king to g6. So can you, can you simply start attacking? Uh, well, not really. Uh, one of the ideas that perhaps comes to mind is knight to f4 check. Uh, so what happens here? Of course, if you capture the knight, then knight comes to e6 with a double check, you win the queen. Uh, but if you simply capture it, yes, you do open up the e-file, but there's no way to take advantage of this. And it seems very unnatural that the black king is actually quite safe on g6, while the knight is controlling h7 and f7. Uh, there's simply no way to continue the attack. Black uh, keeps uh, uh, an eye on this e6 square, so there's really no way to do it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, white only needs a draw, and uh, she becomes uh, the world chess champion. Uh, so what happens if knight to f3 is played? Simply bringing the knight back. And now if king repeats, king h7, now you go knight back to g5 check, king g6, knight goes back, and you repeat, because you only need a draw to become a world champion. The problem is, uh, after knight to g5, uh, what happens if... Uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, what happens if knight g5 check, king g6, and then what happens if knight captures... Uh, uh, if king to g6, then uh, what do you what do you really play here? Uh, if you just go knight back to f3, black can capture on d5. And then after bishop captures, uh, is it still uh, a draw after king to h7? Now, not so much. Now after knight to g5 check, uh, it's a bit of a different story. Because now white uh, black can actually capture the knight. Pawn captures and queen to h5 now does nothing. Uh, because black can actually defend. The queen is now also uh, controlling the g5 uh, pawn. Uh, and there's really no point in capturing it. You will just uh, be down a piece. So there's really no good way to continue this attack. If, if h4, simply attacking the pin piece, f4 now comes. Uh, black is defending uh, and all is well for black. So it uh, seems like uh, this was an excellent move, knight to g5. But there is no actual clear way of how do you win this. So uh, 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 Katarina Lagno decides not to do this. First, b4. This always remains the idea, but now you want to play b5 and kick this knight away from c6. Uh, Jew immediately goes knight to g6, and now ideas like knight g5 are no, are no longer possible, as the queen is now also guarding the g5 square. Uh, h captures, now knight, uh, queen to h5 is pointless, because like we've mentioned, the g5 pawn is now very well, well protected. Uh, after knight to g6, uh, we have b5, kicking this knight away, knight to a5, attacking the bishop on c4, uh, but as we already mentioned, the bishop has a very nice outpost on a2, uh, and now comes bishop 
to e6. A very nice developing move, attacks the knight, but also counters uh, this very strong light square, bishop on a2. Uh, and here, uh, you could try something like, uh, well, there really aren't no good discoveries, aren't any good discoveries. The bishop on e6 is unguarded, uh, but knight to f6 check simply runs into rook captures or queen captures, and then the bishop on e6 is, uh, is, is protected. So here we have queen to a4 attacking the knight here, uh, b6 protecting the knight, and now comes bishop to d2. Uh, you want to uh, uh, get this bishop somehow into the game so you can develop your rooks and, uh, well, keep on developing. Uh, rook to g8. Uh, Jew does have a semi-open g-file, so she definitely plans to use it. Rook a to d1, queen to d7, and now comes knight to h4. And knight to h4 is a move that loses the game, but it's not... Uh, it's not really like a super blunder, but it's more of a subtle blunder that uh, when someone tells you it's a blunder, you then realize how to take advantage of it. So here I'm actually telling you it's a blunder, so feel free to pause the video here and try to take advantage of this uh, knight to h4 idea. Uh, I will give you a couple of seconds as usual. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are uh, again an excellent uh, uh, solver of positions that never happened uh, over the board. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, the move that was not played in this game, but it's not an easy move to find, is actually c4. Uh, with c4, you take away the bishop's protection of the knight on d5, but also you take away the queen's protection of this knight on h4. Uh, so it's uh, really a wonderful, a wonderful idea. Uh, now, after knight captures on g6, first you will capture on d5, because this knight uh, isn't protected at all. And now, after d captures on c4, you simply go back. Uh, and now, this is the problem. Your knight on g6 is still under attack. Uh, knight to h4, you have bishop to f6 attacking the knight. You cannot protect with g3, because the g uh, g pawn would be pinned. The rook uh, is pinning the g pawn. Uh, you would have to move the knight. Knight to f3, and here comes the move you really had to visualize to go into all of this queen b oops not queen c7 uh but actually queen b7 and now there's a really not nothing smart you can do this uh queen captures on f3 is a threat you can't really move the knight because then queen captures on g2 uh would be the threat of checkmate and uh, there's really no way to protect it uh something like rook to e3 would be met with f4 simply attacking the rook uh, and now you will either go rook d3 and allow e4 now it's uh simply a lost position uh, or you will try something like queen to c2 as f4 was played but uh, after you move the king uh let's say king to h8 you still have to move the rook, you can move it to e4 to prevent e4, but now comes the bishop to f5, uh, and again, black is winning. So, a very nice subtle idea, this c4 move, uh, uh, Jude did not find it over the board, uh, she played bishop to h8, and now we have knight captures on g6. Rook captures on g6, uh, and now queen to h4, bringing the queen uh, both into the attack, but also in to help out with the defense. There's a lot of pressure here going on against the h6 pawn, uh, but uh, of course, uh, Jew will double rooks on the g file. Uh, rook a to g8, and now we have g3. Of course, you don't want to allow rook captures on g2. Uh, and again, uh, you could definitely stir some trouble by going c4. If c4, uh, then queen to e7 check, uh, something you allow simply exchanging queens, and after rook blocks, queen captures. Bishop captures, and then after pawn captures uh, on c4, uh, white would be somewhat better here. Well, Black's knight is a bit misplaced here, you are uh, up in material, uh, so not interested in doing that. So instead, queen to f7. Uh, simply, there's a double attack against the d5 knight, and now queen to e7 doesn't really do all that much for you. Uh, you're not really threatening to exchange queens here, because black will just ignore you and capture a free knight on d5. Uh, now the queen is no longer protected. Uh, uh, black is definitely threatening to play queen captures on e7, and here after captures, 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 and rook here, you would capture the rook, but then after king captures, uh, you would actually have a knight, uh, a knight and a bishop for a rook here. So uh, definitely uh, w would be uh, not not better, but uh, b but much worse. Uh, so white would definitely have the upper hand here. Uh, so, uh, after queen to f7, uh, we have uh, c4. Uh, queen to e7 definitely was a possibility, but not played. Uh, we have bishop to f6 attacking the queen on h4, and now comes knight captures on f6. Uh, rook captures on f6, and now f4. 
not allowing black to play f4 and open up the position. Uh, we have rook to g4, attacking white's queen, uh, queen to h3, and now rook f to g6. Uh, again, doubling up on the g-file, we have rook to f1, uh, and now comes queen to g7. Now this, uh, you can see that uh, Aliyahin's gun is fully loaded, and uh, white is white has to make a move. Uh, just to show what the threat is, if if uh, black if white makes some sort of a silly move like rook d to e1, uh, then of course <clears throat> uh, the th the threat is rook captures on g3. And after rook captures on g3, uh, h captures on g3, rook captures, you lose the queen and the game. Captures, captures. And now after the king moves, uh, well, black is just better, but there's also a forced win after bishop to b7. There's really no way to defend against this. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find a way how to proceed uh, with white here. How do you prevent rook captures on g3? And, you know, it's not uh, not a small task as the title of uh, uh, FIDE Women's World Chess Champion depends on it. So, uh, I, as usual, I will give you a couple of seconds, so feel free to go for it. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent player. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, queen to h5 is the only move that actually saves white. Uh, because now rook captures on g3 doesn't work, but uh, it's not uh, all that easy to figure out why it doesn't work. Uh, after h captures, rook captures on g3, king to h2, uh, now comes rook to g2 check. King goes to h1, and now uh, black still seems to have this bishop to c8 move, which, uh, you know, bishop to b7 would be a pretty dangerous idea. Uh, but now uh, the real defensive resource for white is actually d4. And now the threat is if you go bishop to b7, white will play d5 and close this diagonal forever. So you cannot allow this. You have to play e captures on d4, but then comes bishop to b1. And now you're preventing bishop to b7 by actually threatening to capture on f5. If bishop here, then bishop captures. Uh, king moves and now <clears throat> uh, queen to e8 check. Uh, queen blocks, queen captures, king captures. Uh, and now uh, even rook to g1, not allowing any discoveries to be made uh, as the, the rook on g2 is also pinned, so it's pretty much a double pin. You would have to capture here, and then after king captures, uh, it's uh, basically white is up a whole rook. So uh, after bishop to b1, you would not be able to play bishop to b7 because of this threat. You would have to play something like queen to b7, but even that is not enough. Uh, now uh, white would have queen to f3, and now after queen captures, rook captures, uh, rook has to move back, and now simply king moves, and uh, again, you are up a whole rook. So queen to h5, definitely a wonderful move. You just have to get your queen out of h3, not to allow this rook captures on g3 to come with an attack on your queen. And uh, we've just seen that ideas, any active ideas for black don't work, and as soon as white plays rook to f3, uh, then any future plans against the g3 pawn uh, will simply not work. Uh, but here, facing uh, the Alejen's gun, as you know, it, it is uh, quite, quite a dangerous structure here, uh, Katarina had some six and a half minutes on the clock, and she played a move that simply will not do. Uh, instead of queen to h5, she played king to h1, uh, but now uh, it's actually game over because she she voluntarily put her king uh, on this diagonal, and uh, Jew simply played bishop to c8. Uh, also interesting, uh, even uh, this king to h1 move doesn't really help white uh, say. Uh, uh, white queen be protected after rook captures on g3. Uh, if h captures, rook captures, and queen to h5, still you get queen to b7 check. Now you would have to block, there's really nothing to do here. If you play king h2, queen g2 will be checkmate, so after rook blocks, rook captures, uh, you would have to move the king to prevent discoveries, but still, uh, your king is in the mating net. Uh, queen f2 checkmate. Uh, but, okay, after king to h1, it's a it's a very, you know, barbaric move. Uh, when Jun goes for the for the nicer one, bishop to c8, now bishop to b7 is, of course, the threat. Uh, we have queen to h5, and now bishop to b7 check. Uh, king to g1, but now with the bishop already being on b7, it's a completely different story. Rook captures, pawn captures, rook captures, king to f2, and after rook to g2, uh, it was in this position that uh, Katarina Lagno resigned the game. So uh, she resigned because whatever she does leads to a forced checkmate. If king e1, then queen g3 check, rook blocks, queen captures. And if you go queen, uh, king to e3, then of course you get queen check, rook blocks, and now pawn captures on f4. Again, with checkmate as the pawn here 
uh, prevents the king from escaping this pawn uh, prevents the king from escaping here and the rook is covering the second rank uh, so yeah uh, after rook to g2 uh, Katarina Lagno resigned the game. Uh, the match is now tied. They went into tie breaks, and in tie breaks, out of the four games, uh, the first two games were drawn, and then Wen Junju uh, managed to beat Katarina Lagno two games in a row. Uh, and uh, as of uh, today, uh, Wen Junju is uh, the FIDE World's Women Champion. So yeah, uh, very uh, you know, congratulations to her. And uh, we do have a very nice photo here uh, of. Uh, uh, Dvorkovic presenting uh, both of them with prizes as they are the finalists uh, of this uh, competition. Uh, I do not know who the gentleman on the right is, but I'm sure some of you do. So, you know, feel free to also share in the comments. Uh, so, yeah, there you have it. Uh, as you can see, definitely a lot of fireworks on the board. Uh, much more <laughs> fireworks than in the uh, Carlson versus Car Caruana championship. And it's really, really amazing that, um, you know, so close but yet so far you you have the white pieces and you just need a draw uh so many opportunities present themselves you know if for example if black didn't have to win this game most likely in that position that we've mentioned uh sorry let me just go back real quick uh here perhaps you know if this was just a regular game perhaps bishop captures or knight captures would be played but here you give white so many chances so many options white really has to think figure out everything goes into time trouble and then you know uh, finally after facing Garyekin's gun uh, blunders the game and uh, you know uh, ends up losing uh, any chances of uh, of becoming a world champion so really really crazy stuff uh, but yeah, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Robert Atkinson, Juan Vincente Alvarez, uh, Chris Jeans, uh, Carlos Graca, and uh, Oli uh, Murainen for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully, with some more interesting content. Either we're going to check something uh, in the morning if I will have time, but if not, continuing with Carlson versus Caruana, game 11. Thank you all, and I will see you soon.